Hi everyone, Sajid Amit here, and I'm very excited to bring to you my review of the RAL Requisite CA1A. So I got this in my hands very recently, so I'm not going to be able to do a very long review. I'll just give you my first impressions on this headphone. So a few disclaimers just to get them out of the way. This was paid for with my own money, although I got it from RAL. So big shout out to RAL for getting this in my hands so fast. Uh, it's not often that this happens because I live in South Asia, not in any sort of, you know, hot spot of the audiophile hobby. So it does take me a bit of time, longer than most reviewers, to get these high-end flagships, that recent flagships, to get them in my hands. The second thing I want to disclaimer is that um, I did own the SR1A, and I did like it, and I sold it because of a whole variety of reasons that I'll perhaps get into. Uh, but a lot of people loved the SR1A. For those of you who are not acquainted with the SR1A, the SR1A is a predecessor to the CA1A. SR1A was very well received by some audiophiles, a lot of audiophiles who token for technical performance. And a lot of audiophiles did not. I mean, they sort of had criticisms about this SR1A because there were shortcomings to its tonality, such as lack of sub bass. And, you know, some people also didn't like the sort of very untraditional form factor that the previous headphone from RAL had. So the SR1A had this sort of open flap design. So they sort of floated over your ears. Speaker like design is basically what people who liked it called it but it wasn't my cup of tea. So I was very excited to check these out because these have a very traditional headphone design insofar as this cups go. So these are Circum Aural headphones. First time from RAL, first ever Circum Aural ribbon headphones. So it's a lot of firsts, guys. So with that sort of out of the way, to jump into discussion of its firstly aesthetics, comfort and build, and then of course sound. So comfort wise, which is something that matters the most to me, uh, this is a fairly comfortable headphone. So they don't have a right and left marking and some people have been talking about this. But it's pretty evident that it doesn't need to because this is how you wear it, right? So the grills, of course, the shape of the grills give away the fact that, you know, this is going to be left because this part of the grill is closer to the ear. And um, so comfort-wise, as is pretty evident, it's very roomy, guys. It's very roomy. There is minimum clamp. Uh, the steel headband, you're not going to feel the coldness of the steel because you have the leather strap here. The leather strap buttons into this sort of uh, uh, yoke it, in a very typical RAL SR1A style. And um, so a lot of people have been talking about this design, though. Some people have been criticizing these foam cups, ear pads, I'm sorry. Uh, these ear pads, of course, are not premium leather ear pads, but RAL says that you don't need leather ear pads for this because you don't need ribbon drivers to seal the way you might need traditional drivers to seal to form a seal with your face or your skin so these pads are what they are they're very uh, uh you know they're fairly comfortable dyed foam pads they have a cutout on top and at the bottom so these are called the coffee bean pads Royal chips two sets of pads with these headphones the others are called the donut pads and these pads will make a world of difference to the sound which i'll get into um, yeah, so this ships in two boxes. I'll show you the boxes if you care about that sort of thing. Now, to talk about the cups, the cups are pretty interesting looking, and a lot of people have been talking about these ear cups. These ear cups are made of this very advanced polymer, this polycarbonate infused with glass fiber. High-density glass fiber is what I understand to be the case. Now, what that means is when it catches light, it does glisten a bit. It, this has a nice texture. It looks like gray rock or graphite. And yeah, so they call it a gemstone design because of all these facets and apparently it's very difficult to pull off. Um, but yeah, and the other reason why some people have been, you know, talking or perhaps complaining a bit about the look of this without getting this in their hands is that um, this is not painted. And again, Raul's answer to that is that it's not painted because if they were painting around all these edges, th these edges are not sharp at all, by the way. I can touch them all day. Uh, if they painted around these edges, there would be, an, you know, a high likelihood that these would the paint would be scuffing or, you know, peeling off. So that's the reason why it's not painted. And they wanted to maintain the pristineness of this look, which I think works well. And the final word on these ear cups is that they're pretty strong and durable. So Raul Requisite is the first company, apparently, to answer to the call from Abyss, you know, to drive a car over your headphones as if, you know, people take that sort of a call seriously. But Raul did. And so this can withstand the force or the pressure of a car going over it. So this is very, very durable. This, you can drop this, it won't break. So that's something worth keeping in mind. Uh, but of course, don't test it. I have not, and I would, you know, and I'd advise against it. And other aspects of this construction, you know, it's techno-artistic looking. Um, this yoke is, is, is uh, laser etched and then hand molded. 
So there's a lot going on in this design. I just want to point out. So you know, it is not you know just some random utilitarian sort of um, approach. Raal has you know thought a lot about a lot about durability in this design. Is something that they have talked about, and it's about 440 grams. So it's not the heaviest headphone. As a matter of fact, it's on the lighter side, which is something I'm appreciating because. Some of you who watch my channel will know that I've suffered from neck spasms and back spasms, which are just about okay right now. But uh, the point is, it's not heavy, so I've been able to test this for hours. And I'm very, very grateful to Ralph for keeping the weight to a manageable level. 440 grams is manageable, guys. All right, so that's a discussion on aesthetics, build, and comfort. Very roomy ear, ear cups. So uh, that's worth pointing out. This also comes with a transformer box. The transformer box is something that it, they're you know shipping this CA1A with. So this is a TI1B transformer box. They also have a different version. This is a very nifty version because you can use this with any headphone amp, which now opens up ribbon headphones to a wider section of the community. Uh, previously, you needed an in interface that only worked with speaker amps, or you could buy a dedicated headphone amp for the RAL, and RAL has a couple of dedicated headphone amps. But with this, you can use any headphone amp as long as it outputs, as long as your headphone amp outputs two watts, into 16 ohms or 32 ohms because so see what happens is these ribbon drivers have very low impedance once the cable is attached to this uh, i think the overall impedance becomes around 0 0.2 ohms which is far lower than most headphones so in order for headphone amps to drive this or traditional headphone amps to drive this what this transformer box does this toroidal transform ribbon headphone amplifier interface does is it converts this wow headphone the ca1a with cable impedance load into something that's palatable and acceptable by headphone amps. So either a 32 ohm load or a 16 ohm load. So what you want to make sure you can, your amp can output two watts into 16 ohms or 32 ohms, a minimum of two watts. You can also therefore drive this with a speaker amp, but as advised by the manufacturer, you might want to be careful with the volume pot. If your speaker amp it outputs more than 25 watts at eight ohms. So yeah, so this in, uh, transformer box is very nifty. So just to show you what it does, um, it, so this is basically where I've plugged in my headphone output, and this is where I plugged in the RAL CA1A headphone. And um, so this, I'm sorry, this, it's the other way around. So this is where, I will just show you the cables, which is why I have the cables affixed. So this is where basically the ribbon headphone output goes. And uh, they supply you with a pretty long headphone cable and these, of course, connectors get go inside the ear cups. So that's where the headphone goes. It's pretty self-evident, so you're not going to struggle to figure this out. And this is essentially an interconnect that goes into your headphone amp. Um, yeah, so that's basically what the transformer box does. It presents a recognizable load to your headphone amplifier, so the RAL CA1A can be driven by traditional headphone amplifier as long as it outputs two watts into either 16 ohms or 32 ohms all right to talk about sound so what does this sound like in a nutshell it sounds pretty fantastic um for the price because these are priced insanely competitively at two thousand dollars guys so keep in mind that the entire package of twenty five hundred dollars is for the headphone headphone and for the transformer box and the transformer box comes in at $500, so it's not super expensive in the larger scheme of things. Um, so this is $500. This is $2,000. So this is barely a couple of hundred to three hundred dollars more expensive than an HD800S. This is barely about four hundred dollars more expensive than an Aria. This is an absolute steal for the money. Is basically a TLDR for this review. Um, it is insane in terms of its tonality and technical performance. So see, I'm not looking to add headphones to my stable anymore. I suffer from these neck spasms and upper back trapezius spasms, and I also have lower back problems. I am not looking to add headphones to my stable. I love headphones. I love the hobby. I've sort of decided to transfer the hobby to, I've culled my stable essentially. You might, some of you might not have been selling a lot. I will be selling more. And I am not looking to add headphones to my stable at all. I'm plenty satisfied by keeping the Susvara with me and the um, Ibis AB1266 5TC. So these headphones I'm keeping, I'm keeping the very closed and I'm keeping a 6XX. Uh, of course, in the course of this review, I'll talk about how this compares to Susvara. But I think what I want you guys to know is that I actually thought of buying this. 
I'm really, I'm, I'm keeping this because I already bought it. I, I'm really, really enamored with this headphone. Firstly, I love the fact that it's so light and roomy and comfortable. Secondly, in terms of technical performance, it's just breathtaking. It's, it's just a notch below a Susvara and a TC. It's a notch below the SR1A as well, but it's significantly more technically proficient than any headphone at this price point. Anything I've tried from, honestly, from other companies that I love, from Meze, from, from other headphones in around this price range. So this is far more technically proficient than I think a lot of ZMF headphones even. And this is coming from someone who loves ZMF headphones. So if technical proficiency is your thing, this is very detailed. Details pop in a ribbon driver. I think it's, the details are very etched and very clear and very visible. So details pop from a very black background if you like this sort of thing. It's fast, the driver is fast, which has a flip side because I feel like it doesn't have the natural decay that perhaps ZMF headphone bicellulose drivers have. So you get a very fast, very laser sharp focus sound uh, with some lack of decay. Uh, it's roomy, it's, it's airy, it's not as wide staging as an SR1A, so it's definitely a very headphone-like experience. So people who are saying that this retains everything about the SR1A, some of my uh, uh, people on my forum have been talking about how this is essentially, you know, an SR1A in a, in a sort of circumoral form. It's not. It's not as wide. It's not as even deep in terms of its imaging and staging ability as an SR1A. That it's not. Tamberly, I think it's better than an SR1A because I feel like because they got the tonality right, there's something about the timbre of this set of ribbon headphones that I think supersedes in terms of its naturalness, supersedes the SR1A. So that's for technical performance. I think it performs at the level of a $4,000 headphone, guys. I'm not kidding. I think this can give an LCD4, a Utopia, a run for its money. I do think the Utopia and the LCD4 are slightly more technical and resolving than this, but that's what I think. And for those of you who want a comparison with the SR1A, the SR1 is still more resolving, as you'd imagine, because it's a higher priced headphone. And Raul would think about that, think about that if they, you know, when they were pricing these headphones. It's not as wide in terms of a staging or deep in terms of a staging and layering and imaging. But images are distinct and it's, it's, it's a very good technical performer for the price. Tonality wise, it's basically where I think I got my second surprise and second positive surprise. It's a lovely, it's a well-tuned headphone. In many ways, it's so well-tuned that I think it almost gave my Susvaras a run for its money. It's got decent bass, very good bass. I've tried this with a variety of headphones, headphone amplifiers, and what I really liked, the synergy that I really liked with the ICANN signature, the Pro ICANN signature, because you have the bit of bass boost, and with the bass boost, the bass here comes alive. I would say this is bass on par with the Susvara in terms of its impact, in terms of its presence. It is slight, it's, a, it's a more dynamic headphone than a Susvara, and I'll get into that a bit. Um, Mid-range is lucid, it's beautiful, it's, I've loved female vocals on this and when A-being between the Susvara and the CA1A last night, there were times, 90% of the time the Susvara beat this, but I would say about 10% of the time this held its own with the Susvara and Susvara is magical for female vocals. Susvara has so much vocal inflection, nuances and all that, that it's very hard for any headphone to keep up with the Susvara when it comes to mid-range. Even the BIS TC, the 1266, does not keep up with the Susvara when it comes to mid-range. So the Susvara trumps it handily. This is better mid-range than on the BIS. This is better mid-range than on the SR1A. I really like this headphone for vocals. I did not find it shouty. I thought it was very well-tuned, neutral-ish. There's a bit of a slight lower treble lift, but in the larger scheme of things, I think it's pretty well done and it does aid to the clarity of things. I felt that if you talk about brightness and absolute brightness of headphones, the Susvara is a brighter headphone. Susvara does sound brighter with, than the CA1A, and I've been abing them a lot over the last few days. Susvara, on many tracks, I've had to turn the volume down because of brightness, because this has lulled me into a sense of comfort. This is not a bright headphone, so I perceive that this will come off as less bright than the SR1A. This is warmer than the SR1A. And this is, of course, using the stock coffee bean pads with the donut pads it becomes much basier it becomes warmer you sort of lose the presence region that this has the presence region is not as lifted as harmon i think so i really like it another unique feature of this guys is because it's a ribbon driver it really sort of does not lie to you you get what's in the track so on some tracks i felt that the mid-range was very in my face on other tracks the mid-range was very recessed 
So it, it's basically going to give you what the track has. It's so in terms of tuning, I really find this to be neutral. Um, I can't speak enough of the of the tuning because it's really really well tuned. So it's it surpassed my expectation in terms of tuning. Although technically, I do think this is not at the level of the SR1A. So that's where I had higher expectations, perhaps. But it's still amazing for the price. So these pads were not to my liking. Uh, I could see their use case, though. Like, Ral calls these YouTube pads because sometimes you play, like, you know, compressed music and, you know, all kinds of modern music and other random genres on YouTube. And if you are into that sort of thing, this will work really well because this is bassy and punchy. Very punchy, guy, by the way. And this will work really well. But this the bass with these... Um, Coffee bean pads was sufficient for me. I have enjoyed this without having to change pads too often. I really like the stock pads. The coffee bean pads are fine for bass. I've loved metal on this, guys. I've loved rock on this. I've loved female vocals on this. A lot of my favorite metal tracks sound so fast and punchy on the CA-18 that I feel like if you like metal, if you don't want to you know, spend for an Abyss 1266 5TC, this could be the next best thing. Perhaps with the exception of an LCD-4, I think. Um, and I love vocals on this. So this is such a fantastic all-rounder. This is basically what we've been wanting RAL to do. Take all their technical performance prowess, or most of it, 90% of it, and sort of squeeze it into a circum oral headphone with better tonality, with better bass extension, punch and slam, while retaining a sense of stage width and stage depth, which this does, and having very, very flowing vocals and a treble that is, you know, one can bear to listen to without getting fatigued. This is that headphone. This is the headphone that is so well tuned. Big kudos to Raul for tuning the CA-1A so well. Uh, yeah, I was just listening to this so, so, for so many hours when aving between the Susvara and this, and I just kept listening to this, forgetting to take notes and all that. So that happened, and I tried to rediscover all my tracks on my playlist with this headphone. So this is a wonderful headphone, guys. Again, it's not a Susvara in terms of technical performance. The Susvara is clearly more detailed, clearly more airy, even more spacious, I think. But this, I think, holds its own on a number of parameters. It's, I think, almost as well-tuned as a Susvara and bases up there mid-range is almost as fun or as, you know, as pleasurable as Susvara's mid-range. Treble, I think, is perhaps slightly better tuned because Susvara does have an 8K peak. I didn't get any sense of peaks. I mean, I do sense there's 6K peak here, but it's really, really minor compared to, you know, other headphones and their treble problems. So that's it really, guys. This is a wonderful headphone. I think it's worth the price and more. $2,000, I mean, this is going to satisfy a lot of you out there. And uh, it is, you know, a wake-up call to many manufacturers who are constantly upping the level, the price level, the price ceiling on headphones and so this is what one can do with, you know, high performance headphones. So big shout out to Ralph for thinking of the customer when designing this, when implementing the sound qualities that it has. And I love this. I hope this was useful. And if you like this, uh, give this a like, subscribe to my channel, and I'll see you in my next one. Bye-bye.